Hello everyone and welcome to Date Cuenta con Jaquecitas, our videos in English. Please, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video or we go live. Remember to please give us a big thumbs up, give us your like, comment in the section down below if you have any questions any suggestions, or if you just want to say hello. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, well, today I want to start this conversation about the story and the beginnings of Gloria Trevi with just a simple question. Do you remember what you were doing at 12 or 14 years old? Uh, 14, I remember I was in my last year of middle school, uh, being part of a of a youth group in in the church of a pantomime youth group. Did you ever have a dream of becoming something? Oh yes, I wanted to be an actress. I also wanted, um, you know, I don't know if I I think we have you know as being sisters kind of the same background where you know you wanna karaoke karaoke just <laughs> singing in front of a mirror or just in your room. Yes. Well, let me tell you, at 14 years old, Gloria Trevi was on her way to becoming one of the biggest stars known all around the world. At 14 years old, Gloria Trevi was part of a competition or how would you call it? A talent show? Yes. Gloria Trevi was, she was in Monterrey. It's known that Gloria Trevi's parents were were in that separation stage. Um, Gloria Trevi really wanted to go to this concert, but in reality, her, her dream was to sing. She already had written some, some songs. She was already doing little stuff, little things in Monterrey, in the Monterrey radio, um, the Monterrey TV, she was already doing a little bit of, of um, singing. And so this contest took place when she was 14. She heard of it. Um, this contest was from Televisa. Televisa was actually the only television network in Mexico at that time. We're talking about 1984. That's all uh, Mexico. Um, that's all, you know, Mexican watched it was yeah. just televisa televisa was everything so she heard of this contest she told gloria trevi told you know her mom I, i'm i really i, I want to go to this contest because her dream was to be a singer but this was like a step to be able to be known so she so her mom um actually gloria ruiz gloria's mom took gloria trevi to the to this contest and she actually, Gloria Trevi, won the contest. This contest was of being the double of Chispita. Chispita is a, was a very well-known soap opera back in the day. Chispita was uh, Lucero. Lucero was also... Interpreted the, by, by Lucero. the singer and actress Lucero. And Gloria Trevi won the contest because they really, really looked a lot alike. Yes. They, she was really her double. Yes, she dressed the same. You can see her braids and her, she was the, the only winner. So, yeah, she, she won this, this contest when she was 14. Uh, what, she, what the price was for this was a vaca uh, was, um, yeah, vacation trip, was clothing, was being to be part of the... A soap opera? Yeah, of the soap opera Chispita and also to be part of the school of Televisa. Like a, a actress or acting academy, right? Yes. That was by Televisa. Very, very well known. It's alleged that the mother of Lucero, what's the mother's name? Lucero as well. Yeah. But yeah, so the mother, it's, it's alleged that the mother of Lucero was not too fond of Gloria Trevi taking the spotlight out of Lucero and had her connections in the entertainment business and moved some stuff around so she wasn't part of the soap opera. 
Yes, that's true. And that 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 was one of the prices where, you know, Gloria Terry was going to be part of the soap opera and she actually wasn't because yeah, it is it is known that 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 actually happened. She didn't get the prize. Why? Because Lucero's mom, um, you know, she saw potential in this 14-year-old Gloria Trevi. Gloria Trevi. Yeah, yes. cuz Gloria, I mean, it's undeniable in my opinion. I think there are people that are born with the talent, with the gift. Exactly. And I think She's... Gloria was born with the gift of writing, with the gift of being able to interpret and just an overall great star. Drawing. She draw she too. Yeah. yeah, she was yeah, she had a, a lot of artistic she has a lot of artistic qualities. Yeah, at a uh, at a young age she did. She did like what you said, she was uh, she was already drawing. By fourteen when, when Gloria Trevi won this concert, she was already drawing. She had already already written some songs and she was already you know, singing. So yeah, of course, Luce, uh, going back to Lucero's mom, she did see the potential and of course, the talent that Gloria Trevi had. After Gloria winning the scholarship from SEA, from Televisa, she moved to Mexico City to be able to have this scholarship of acting from La SEA, uh, from SEA. And her mother left uh, left her in a in a safe place, kind of like you guys would would imagine, like a college, you know, if she kind of like a college student with a family. That's how Gloria was left by her mother, Gloria Ruiz, in Mexico City, to be able to, like I said, to receive this scholarship from last from from SEA from Televisa. And so she was uh, doing her own thing putting her songs out there around so, uh, a year later uh, that Gloria Trevi was in Mexico City studying in Las Ensea de Televisa she actually also knew this important uh, this this singer uh, called uh, named Ricky Luis he was a singer a writer he was also part of the radio in Monterrey. He was um, in part of this radio in, in Monterrey, Mexico. And Ricky Luis already knew, had a, he already knew about Gloria Trevi because remember they're Monterrey, Gloria Trevi lived in, in Monterrey. So he actually also, also knew that Gloria Trevi had won this contest from uh, being the double uh, of Chispita. So what it is known is that Ricky Luis was in an airplane one day and coincidentally, uh, Sergio Andrade was actually in the same plane. They actually sat next to each other and he, Sergio Andrade started commenting about that he was forming a group. Uh, he was going to name it Boquitas Pintadas, that he already had members of the group, but he needed one more female member because this group was going to be a female female group. Ricky Luis right away remembered of Gloria Trevi. He said, Gloria Trevi, do you, do you know do you know her? She, she won the double of, of Chispita. I know her. So Ricky Luis told Sergio Andrade, I know her. And Sergio Andrade, right away, his eyes opened. His eyes were wide open when, when Ricky Luis said that Gloria Trevi had won the contest of the Double of Chisipita and that he knew who was Gloria Trevi. He said he asked Ricky Luis if he knew of her um, to, you know, to take her to him so she would be able to, you know, so she could audition to this, this new group of Boquitas Pintadas. It is also known that Gloria Trevi being in Mexico City, getting off of a bus, of a public bus, Ricky Luis and Gloria Trevi see each other and they were so happy to see each other. They hug each other and Ricky Luis right away tells Gloria Trevi, hey, you know what? There's a very important producer, uh, Sergio Andrade. He's actually forming a group. It's called Boquitas Pintadas. He mentioned to me that they only need one more female member to be able to form this group. He's already actually been forming it for some time, been, you know, making making this group. And so he Let told... Let me take you to audition. 
Yeah. For Sergio Andrade. Yes. And connecting back to why Sergio Andrade was so interested in Gloria Trevi because she won the double of Chispita Lucero is because Sergio Andrade knew Lucero. He was actually the one that produced a, a CD, an album for Lucero. So Andrade knew Lucero when she was... How old was Lucero? She was very young. Very young. I think around around 12 years old, 11, 12. Very yes. young. And it's known that they had some sort of romantic romantic relationship mm -hmm. where the mother well the parents of lucero specifically were, the mother of lucero specifically mm -hmm. the mother was absolutely against it and they cut ties with sergio andrade for good forever and it was a little bit of a controversy that was kind of hidden under a lot of mystery yes um we're gonna we're, we're talking a little bit about that situation but but we're gonna go into when we start talking about the story how lucero's all, the name of lucero always comes back yes because this man uh, this predator this abuser sergio andrade would actually always be talking to her to his victims about lucero and about Lu how lucero betrayed him how lucero left him So Andrade already yeah. knew Lucero. He had already experienced. I don't think Lucero was his first victim, but he had experienced. He was 30 already. Oh, Let's he take was that 30. into mind. He, he was, was 30 than, already. Yeah. When this when he was going out or with Lucero. So then he hears about after all these things with Lucero happening, he hears and it comes back to him about Gloria Trevi and knowing that he was obsessed with Lucero and Gloria Trevi being such a look alike, a, basically a double of Lucero, he was more than interested. He's like, this is my next prey. Yes. And it's very important, you know, that we that for us to be able to talk to you guys how this all started, how Gloria Trevi got to know Sergio Andrade, because you can see how Sergio Andrade is the only abuser, how he was already manipulating and abusing. You know, emotional abuse is abuse, physical abuse is abuse, already abusing a child, an 11, 12-year-old child, before he even knew Gloria Trevi. He, and he was already Sergio Andrade, being 30 years old. He was already known in the industry. He was known as, a, as when we talked in the episode of Sergio Andrade, The monster, the his first background. episode, his background. He was already who he was. He was already a producer. He was very important in Televisa. He had already won a lot of awards. They would, I mentioned it again. They would say that whatever he would touch would turn into gold. Imagine a fort, uh, a fifteen, almost fifteen or fifteen year old Gloria Trevi getting to, to know that she was gonna actually audition in front of this, such a powerful, uh, talented man Sergio Andrade imagine how she was so excited she was with her dreams and we go back to where I was explaining the story how Ricky Luis took uh, took Gloria Trevi to his to Sergio Andrade's school uh, school uh, he took her there and Gloria Trevi was actually it is known that since the beginning he would start doing Sergio Andrade doing certain abuse to his victims why because gloria trevi had to stay that day hours manipulation very, yeah staying until very late to be able to get an audition with him well he, first of all he wanted to establish who was the important one by making people like gloria trevi among others wait in the waiting room for hours and hours and hours he was testing how much does she really want this wow. how long is she willing to wait and she was willing to wait for hours and she did she waited for hours until he finally decided to see her can you imagine how psychologically exhausting that must have been 
for Gloria. In that moment, she was probably so excited and she had so many emotions and all her dreams of becoming famous were going through her head. She could probably imagine uh, herself singing and concerts and being famous and being a important singer. She wasn't probably thinking how many hours were passing by. She was just waiting patiently until this monster decided to call her in and audition. Yes. After the audition, Sergio Andrade told Gloria Trevi that he saw talent in her and that she was going to be part of Boquitas Pintadas. Gloria Trevi was actually the last member, the, the last one to become a member of the group, Boquitas Pintadas. Sergio Andrade was already married to Maria Raquel Portillo or artistically known as Mari Boquitas. Mari Boquitas was around 14 years old and Gloria Trevi was around was 15 years old when when Raquel or Mari Boquitas and Gloria Trevi get to know each other. Uh, like I said, Maria Raquel was forming the group along with Sergio Andrade. The members of the group, the first one was Raquel, because I want to repeat again, Sergio Andrade was already married to a minor, being Mari Boquitas, 15 years old. The other member of the group was Pilar Romero, Monica Moore, Glo uh, Claudia Rosas, and the last member of Boquitas Pintadas, was Gloria Trevi in 1985. This is when it took place. Actually, it is known that this group, all the all these five women, including Gloria Trevi, we were actually practicing. They practiced different instruments. They would practice singing. Gloria Trevi was writing more more songs and this actually took this actually took like a year and a half it was a year and a half of this group practicing day and day and night because this man Sergio Andrade was so crazy well back then they put it as perfectionist and he wanted everything to be perfect and they were put through grueling hours of studying of practicing bleeding fingers, not eating, um, manipulation of him telling them, if you want to become famous, if you want to be good in life, if you want to be a good um, singer and so-and-so, you have to do what I tell you and this is how you're going to do it and you're going to do it when I tell you, how I tell you, when I tell you and with who I tell you. His way of manipulation and his way of abuse towards these young women, young girls under age was so horrific. And what this did to the psyche of a young mind with a dream, with a desire to become famous. Can you imagine what that did to them? Especially talking about Gloria Trevi. She had a dream. She had a desire to become famous and to be known around the world. She would have done anything to get that opportunity that he sold her. He said, without me, you're not going to get anywhere. This is how I'm going to make you famous. You have to stay with me and you have to do what I tell you, how I tell you and when I tell you. I'm your only opportunity to become famous. And I wanted to correct something about what I said from the group in 1985. 1985 was actually the first performance and the only, and one of the few, not the only, one of the few performances that that Boquitas Pintadas did, but that was when the release. Let's go back to when Gloria won the contest in 1982. More than, a little bit more than a year and a half, Gloria Trevi was not known by anyone. She was just like you were saying, being abused and man manipulated by Sergio Andrade more than a year and a half practicing for the group. But in reality, the group only did one perform one important performance and like three, four of other performances around the city, around Mexico. But the group was actually from decision from Sergio Andrade, the, 
the group no longer um, split. They split as a group. And let's say one more thing. Actually, when Boquitas Pintadas did the performance or when they were all this practice that they had, Gloria Trevi was actually not the main voice. Actually, was somebody else was, I think, Claudia Rosas and, and Monica Muir. But she was more like uh, with the instruments. Yes. I imagine he said it's going to take me years to really polish all these girls to really bring the talents out talents that he already saw in gloria for example exactly in the out the, the only poquitas pintadas only had one album in that out in that album like three songs were written from gloria trevi so basically andrade didn't see any potential in poquitas pintadas but he did see all the potential and talent in gloria trevi it is important to know that when Gloria Trevi was part of Boquitas Pintadas, she had already been manipulated and abused for years. For more than a year, uh, a year and a half. Actually, when, when Boquitas Pintadas was made their first performance, one of the very few, Gloria Trevi was 17 years old. So imagine two years, more than a year and a half, being 15 and then 17 with Boquitas Pintadas, all the abuses she had been living as a, as a girl underage, a minor. She was being locked up without food, without seeing her family, without communication to any family members or anyone that could be able to help her. And Sergio Andrade, already having many years of experience of being Sergio Andrade and with the connections that he had with the television and the entertainment world and family members that had and were part of the Mexican government, he used all that against all his victims. He used telling them, I'm powerful. I know people. If you ever leave, I will know how and where to find you. And I have people with a lot of power that can help me find you. And I'm not only going to hurt you, I'm going to hurt all the loved ones that you have. He actually seduced all these girls. Seduced in a way that they thought it was love, but in his mind it was power. He seduced them with the idea of him being the only one that was going to be able to make them successful and famous and give them the opportunity that they so desire to become artists. And part of that manipulation was to say, I do all this for your own good. I do all this because I know best. And he probably tested them day in and day out and put them against each other. I'm going to make you famous, but if she becomes better than you, then I will make her famous. So it was a constant competition between victims all the time. It was to start, uh, Sergio Andrade was a way of to start destroying her emotionally. Everything he did was to destroy her, to show his power. It's... So and it's sad. so sad to think that the woman that I really admire, and I still do, but back then when I was very young and I saw Gloria Trevi and I saw the artist, the star, how confident she was, how she was so for the women's rights. And she talked about really hard subjects like abortions and um, womanizers and men that wanted to control and manipulate how she portrayed something that deep inside she was being part of. She was being abused. She was being um, manipulated. She was being uh, forced to do things that she didn't want to do and she would never imagine doing in her whole life. 
And to think that that girl that sang Zapatos Viejos or Pelo Suelto, there were songs that she didn't write. She was wow, so yes. sad and depressed. All the songs that she really wrote, like Con Los Ojos Cerrados, gives you an idea of What's what the- she was feeling. Who she was in love with. El Recuento de los Años. Have you seen the video of El Recuento de los Daños? It's basically her story. And I invite you guys to watch that. I might insert a clip of El Recuento de los Daños in this video. Just so you guys know what her head space was at, what she was thinking, what she was feeling. It's been said and it's known by psychologists and psychiatrists that a person might show an image of security, confidence, but deep inside, they could be totally the opposite. And even though they're not able to speak about the violence that they're being part of or against them they show it through their art they show it through writing in a diary it could be a song it could be a painting and Gloria Trevi was painting and was drawing her life and people saw it with her talent right she with was her- showing her fans showing us as her fans um what she was going through with her songs, she would actually, it's a way of a cry of help that she actually had. So it's like you said, it's such a shocking story because she became such a superstar international, internationally. She became this superstar, this model for the youth, this confident woman. It's so, that's why it's so, so shocking to know that what she, what we saw in, in her performances were, was nothing at all what was like in her real life. She was somebody, somebody that was controlled 100% of her time and that she never, never, never um, was able to um, enjoy anything of, you know, she won millions. This was an artist that we all know she, her concerts were packed. She won millions. She went all over, uh, all around Mexico, Latin America, Spain, everywhere. She did movies. And unfortunately, I have to mention that she was not really viewed as a model or a role model for young girls because she was being very over-sexualized. But that was not her. That was actually Andrade working through her because in his mind, sex sell. He forced her to do calendars uh with other members of the group with all the girls in the in this cult like semi-naked almost pornographic and that's that's him portraying what his vision was that he wanted to sell of her it was a way of degrading her because it's been known that she didn't want to do um Any all of that those calendars yeah. she Gloria Trevi is known that she would cry and cry and cry because she didn't want to do none of those counts. She didn't want to dress up like that. So it was another way of abusing the girls, abusing Gloria Trevi psychologically, physically, emotionally. And sadly, you can be hit over and over and the bruises will go away. But the damage that something like that can cost you emotionally, it's forever and I feel that Gloria Trevi is such a strong woman because she went through hell and back but she's a survivor yes her part of her life has been hard and has been painful but she I imagine and I would believe that she went to therapy to survive all this and she went through it and she after all these horrible things happened to her she kept writing and she kept writing songs she kept doing concerts she went to jail because of this monster Sergio Andrade and that's a story that we want to get in 
into detail. And it is important for us to be doing, that's why it's important for us, for our English audience to learn more about Gloria Trevi. Because as you said, so many years, 17 years of Gloria Trevi being in the hands of this monster, all of everything that she suffered and to be, and to see that now in 2014, in 2024, uh, Gloria Trevi is being sued by other victims when she's as victims as them. And for, in my personal opinion, she has been the, of all the victims, she has been the one that ha that lost absolutely everything. And I really want to do this, um, videos in this series talking about the life of Gloria Trevi and how she became part of this cult and how she was forced to be part of this cult and how she was manipulated and seduced and abused by Sergio Andrade because I recently came across a documentary from Britain where Aline Hernandez and this, I don't remember the name of this girl but she was part of the group too Aline Hernandez talking about Gloria Trevi and just lies upon lies and the translation and the interpretation that was from Spanish to English was so horrible I was appalled I was like what is going on wow. this is not the real story People have always uh, profited from the name of Gloria Trevi, but not in a positive light. Always putting her as she was the one that lured the girls into the group where we all know the people that really know Gloria Trevi and are part of the tribu know that the only perpetrator and the only bad person and the only monster in this whole story has been Sergio Andrade. And not because she was the, the famous that's why they're, they're trying. That's why we're saying, and it said, it's not, not because you say a lie so many times it becomes true. No, the truth is just because Gloria Trevi had, has so much talent and she was rapidly, she rapidly became famous, that doesn't mean she was any different from the victims. Okay, there was a point that, of course, it's, for example, if she needed to go out to a concert, of course, Sergio Andrade was not going to hit her in places of her body where everyone was going to see. There's a different, the abuser had to treat her differently at certain times because let's remember, she was the one that brought money. The reason why Sergio Andrade was able to do the, this cult, yes, is because of the money that Gloria Trevi produced, but Gloria Trevi had not even a dime of that money. And she was abused when she wasn't in concerts. She was abused the same way. She was hit the same way. She was left without food. She was actually, she actually developed a, she was bulimic. She developed I, th that's, all this. That's the point that I wanted to make. You can hit someone and the bruises will go away. But the form of manipulation and control that he had over them with food controlling them through food and through punishments, putting them, stripping them naked, uh, sleeping in bathtubs, totally naked in the cold. They wouldn't, she wouldn't sleep in a bed. She would sleep on the side of his bed like a, like a dog. He floor. would make yeah. them eat a, a crazy amount of food and then actually force them to throw up because they weren't capable of eating all the food. They weren't capable of keeping down the food because they were starved for so many days and he, they would throw up and he would make them eat the throw up. He would make Gloria Trevi eat her own vomit. Can you imagine what type of psychological damage that did to her? Yes, exactly. We're going to keep talking about these in the next episodes because that's what's so shocking about this story. I, I repeat, being such a superstar, being so enormously famous and knowing that Gloria Trevi went through hell. This is this was so shocking. And we want you guys to learn more about her and learn that they are all victims. And we're going to keep repeating it. These girls, these now women they are all victims. The only perpetrator, the only abuser is Sergio Andrade. And we're going even to other victims that might be listening to us. Because 
you know, as as a psychologist says, you know, if when you start talking about the abuse, it's like you re- relive it again. And it's so unfair that Gloria Trevi has been having to to go through this again, to have to, you know, be in court called the, the being called the abuser when she's a victim, having to go to go through all this. It's super difficult, and Gloria Trevi has not stopped working. She has been a, a woman that, since she started back when we're talking about, back when she was 14, when she won the contest of Double of Chispita, until now that she's now 56 years old, she has not been, have not stopped. She has not been, you know, stopped working, and she's a true, true survivor. America got a little emotional thinking. I see her eyes watery and as well because we both got emotional just thinking about all all this. We are actually also survivors of abuse. So we know. We know what it is to, talk, to go through all this. And it does hurt our hearts that all the victims are, you know, other victims are against uh, another victim like Gloria Trevi. And I would like you to sing... For of course, us, sing. I would like you to sing the first song um, that Gloria Trevi released and made her so popular once she released it, which is Doctor Psiquiatra back in 1989. As a child, I remember being so excited whenever these songs will come up, and I just wanted to be like her and I still want to be like her as strong and I'm not as talented at her as her but yes, her you are. strength <laughs> her strength is admirable and um I'll leave you with this short little singing of Doctor Psiquiatra Pues cuando llego de noche Y me quieren hacer un reproche No oigo nada, no oigo nada Y corro a la ventana Pero del quinto piso el que salta se mata Me pongo violenta, viento adornos de casa No estoy loca, no estoy loca, no estoy loca Solo estoy desesperada Doctor, si que atrás ya no me diga tonterías Doctor Doctor, psiquiatra, quiero vivir mi propia vida. Doctor, psiquiatra, yo no le pagaré la cuenta. Doctor, psiquiatra, ya no me mí, ya no me mí, ya no me mire más las piernas. No, 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 no estoy loca. Thank you, America, for being with me in Date Cuenta con Yaquesitas. Remember, everyone, to subscribe to our channel to give us like, to comment, to let us know anything um, else that you would like us to, that you guys would like us to talk about. We're not only going to be doing the these episodes, but we're also going to keep you updated on everything that's going on because this case, there's a lot of things going on. California, the California case lawsuit. Court lawsuit and the Texas lawsuit as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. See you guys in the next episode. Bye, America. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you guys soon.